Hello, I'm Morgan Peckman and welcome to City and State TV. Today we are on location in Buffalo in the office of the Republican County Chairman of Erie County, Nick Langworthy. Nick, thanks for joining us. No, thanks for having me, Morgan. So obviously everyone is paying attention now to the 2014 statewide race. 2010 was a disappointment for your party. What do you think are the lessons that the party can take away from you know some of the, the frustrations of 2010? Well, first and foremost, we need to unify and prevent primaries. I mean, there uh, was a lot of effort wasted uh, in 2010 when we uh, had primaries for, for nearly every office on the slate except controller and uh, attorney general. Uh, you know, by unifying early, which I think we can do in the next month or so, uh, in recruiting the best possible candidates that we can you know, to run for attorney general, governor, uh, and comptroller. And we have a, a better chance of success. Uh, there's been some speculation that Carl Palladino may again run for governor on a Tea Party line. That would precisely bring about the split in the party that you're saying that you would try to avoid. Um, do you think that is a real possibility? Well, I, I would hope that um, we could unite the Republican Party in, in Republicans and conservatives across the state behind a solitary candidate. And uh, we have to figure out if we have one candidate or two candidates seeking that Republican line. But once we find that answer, um, we need to get behind that candidate. And I would hope that Carl could ultimately support the Republican nominee all the way to November because our primary objective has to be to defeat this governor, Andrew Cuomo. Are you prepared to support Rob Astorino? Uh, well, we're going to, like I said, we're going to find out if we've got one candidate or two candidates or three candidates uh, seeking our Republican endorsement. We need to find that out in the next week or so. And, um, you know, I, I have no reservations with Rob's candidacy. I think Rob Astorino is a real conservative. I think he shares a lot of the values that are important to people here in western New York. He's a strong advocate of the Second Amendment. Um, he is someone that has cut taxes. He's worked very hard to reform government in Westchester County. I'm very impressed with Rob. I think Rob's a friend. I think uh, he's out there meeting people across the state and launching his candidacy. And I think there's a lot of, of positive things happening for Rob. So I would have no reservations if he's ultimately to be the candidate. Uh, be, I, I would support him strongly in that event. And you've also met with Donald Trump. I mean, do you think that his candidacy could actually come to fruition? Could that be uh, that he would really jump into the race? Well, we're going to find out in, in the next week or so. I mean, uh, I will see Donald Trump tomorrow in Syracuse. And um, I, I intend to have some conversations with him about, you know, where where this is going. Is he ultimately going to get into the race or not? Uh, I know the party leaders around the state are um, interested in seeing this process, you know, come to a close. It's, it's, it's going to either start to move forward or uh, it's going to fade away. We've heard um, some talk about John Cahill possibly running for attorney general. Uh, has there been interest in uh, the controller's race uh, from members of your party? And what do you think is the likelihood that Cahill will wind up with the nomination for attorney general? I have called John Cahill and encouraged him to, you know, after I heard he was interested, I've, I've called to encourage him. I think he would be a great candidate for attorney general. And, uh, you know, I know John a long time from his uh, work with Governor Pataki. I think he understands state government inside and out. And we, we desperately need an attorney general uh, that's not a liberal activist, that's actually some Someone that's looking out for the best interests of residents of the state of New York. Uh, I, I, so I, I strongly encourage John to run and I, I hope to have him here in Buffalo soon. Um, I have not been contacted by a candidate for controller yet. I, I hope our party can field a strong candidate. Uh, you know, certainly with uh, New York being a financial sector that it is, uh, we should have the talent uh, to, to field a top-notch candidate against Tom DiNapoli. And you have the most delegates at, in the state convention this year uh, because of how Carl Palladino did in Erie County. How do you intend to, to wield the percentage of the vote that you have? I mean, what, what power do you think that brings you on the, the statewide stage? Well, I, it's, it's been nice to, to have a, a larger say. I mean, New York, or Erie County's always had a, uh, been an upper echelon county just due to our size. I mean, we're just under a million people. Uh, I, I want to say in the 2010 uh, convention, we had probably the third most delegates behind Nassau and Suffolk. 
um, you know, Erie County's got a large voice. I mean, because we uh, basically are seen as one of the more conservative parts of the state and, um, you know, the candidacy of Paladino in 2010 and some of the successes that we've had here, you know, we captured the majority in the legislature in 2013. That was a first since 1977. We've also, um, you know, we have a Republican sheriff, a Republican comptroller, a Republican county clerk. Uh, you know, those factors also having that level of success, you know, electing a congressman, Chris Collins, uh, uh, that, that's, that's helped us have a bigger voice. I, I think, you know, the way I, I view that is its responsibility. Having uh, a larger voice uh, means that you have to uh, help lead. And, you know, I, I'm not generally someone that lets things come to them. I try to be proactive uh, and helpful. Uh, where we can to try to recruit candidates and, and really as a state party there's nothing we can do better right now than go and find the best possible candidates and it's not necessarily just going to the bench of elected officials sometimes you have to go to the private sector and cultivate those candidates. Well uh, downstate oftentimes Republican candidates don't get a great deal of attention because it's been so lopsided with Democratic victories but in Erie County as you alluded to you've had a great deal of success in past election cycles what do you think that you're doing differently here uh, in Erie County than some of the, the parties, uh, some of the county parties downstate? Well, we, we take a message to the taxpayers. It's not a Republican or Democratic message. It's a taxpayer-focused message. And we recruit the best candidates to deliver those messages. I mean, uh, uh, you know, you look at a Chris Jacobs, our clerk, or uh, Stefan Mihailu. They didn't come from elected office and move their way up the ranks. They were people that had succeeded in different areas. Uh, Stefan Mihailu was an investigative reporter. And, you know, who better to, you know, point out the wrongdoing in County Hall than someone who's covered the county budget process inside and out for, you know, you know, 15 years as an investigative reporter. Uh, Chris Jacobs, a uh, successful real estate developer, uh, you know, someone who's actually put people to work. He started a not-for-profit charity. Um, you know, he, he knew what worked and what didn't, and he's been an excellent clerk and streamlined processes, and, and we hear rave reviews from the business community. You know, those are just two great examples of, of great candidates leading to great victories. Uh, we have no business winning a, a countywide election in Erie County if, if it was just based on raw numbers R versus D. We're down two to one in enrollment, uh, kind of similar to New York State. You know, we're, we're down three million votes now as Republicans. We need to do something differently and, and really throw the Hail Mary pass to, to try to, you know, take some risks and take some chances and be more aggressive. When you say Hail Mary pass, do you think that on a statewide level the Republican Party is in dire straits? I mean, could we go the way of Massachusetts and just have a completely blue state? Well, we, we are a completely blue state when you look at statewide elec elections. We haven't won since 2002. And to change a losing culture, you have to win. And we need to do everything we possibly can this year to recruit the best candidates, make sure those candidates have the right message and are funded. Uh, you know, you can't just, you know, beam out television commercials and spec to win. We have to cultivate, you know, and, and tap into, you know, groups of voters that maybe aren't turning out. Um, you know, we have uh, a, especially here in, in upstate, uh, the, the the issue surrounding the New York SAFE Act has created a voter mobilization uh, that I've never seen in this state. And, you know, we're working hand-in-hand -hand with the Second Amendment groups to help register more voters. I mean, there's six million gun permit holders or gun owners in this state. We need to make sure that those people come out to vote because they're not going to vote for Andrew Cuomo this year. Do you think that's one of the problems that the Republican Party has had, that there is such at times a stark divide between the interests and, and the, the issues that matter to downstate voters versus upstate voters. So it's hard to bring that unified message when you talk about the SAFE Act, that's not as much a consideration for voters on the five boroughs. And so how do you, you know, tie that all together on a statewide level? We have to um, use what works for us regionally to our advantage. And then we have to find the common goals that tie us all together. I mean, taxes stifle you know, business growth, uh, you know, we're, we're at the bottom of the, of the charts in terms of, you know, having a business-friendly state, a place that businesses want to come to. I mean, you know, for instance, the governor is obsessed with Buffalo. Uh, his, his loss here to Carl Palladino in 2010, he's been here constantly. He's announced every gimmicky program that he possibly can to try to, you know, show that he's forward thinking on economic development. But when you really talk to small business people, they think that they're wasting our money. 
Um, you know, he created this Buffalo for Billion and designed its own logo for this program. I mean, I, I think a lot of voters see right through this stuff. I mean, you're not going to buy the hearts and minds of the people in Buffalo. It's going to be through results. And uh, culturally, um, you know, we have lost jobs for so long. And we've had so many friends and relatives that we've all had to wave goodbye to. I mean, I think that's what divides upstate and downstate more than anything is that we've had so much population loss and hemorrhaging that, you know, a lot of folks downstate have never had to look a friend in the eye and say, you know, nice knowing you. You know, we'll, we'll see you on Facebook or, you know, we'll talk to you twice a year on the phone. Um, and as this governor has, has created these gimmicky programs, uh, they, they aren't based on uh, raising all ships. I mean, we have uh, a thing that sounds a lot like Solyndra to me that he's going to do in South Buffalo, you know, giving a quarter billion dollars to two solar panel companies to create 800 jobs. I mean, if you gave a quarter billion dollars to the industrious small business people in Western New York, we can create a lot more than 800 jobs. Well, you talk about these gimmicky programs in the Buffalo Billion, but you know, just walking around Buffalo, we do see cranes in the city. We do see, uh, I think, palpable signs of economic development. Do you think that's not that's that's a result of of private investment as opposed to the public money that's that's coming into the region? Some of this public money predates Governor Cuomo so much it's ridiculous. I mean, it, it, it some of this goes back to George Pataki on the Buffalo waterfront uh, in his era of being governor. I mean, it just the wheels turn so slowly here. Uh, the Harbor Center project right by HSBC Arena that's private sector money being put together by Terry Pagula, the owner of the Sabers. I mean, we have you know several of our not for profits are building new headquarters. There is, there's, things are starting to take shape. We need private investment to really make this community thrive again, and we need lower taxes. Uh, and it, this governor has not, you know, created, um, you know, he's, he's got some gimmicky tax cuts, which involved higher taxes on certain segments. It hasn't changed the culture of the state. We're still swimming in red ink. Um, you have people leaving in droves, and it's got to change. And that's the Republican Party's duty, in my view, is to create uh, an alternative to Andrew Cuomo and, and the downstate leadership of the Assembly and the Senate that you know can help make people believe in this state again. Because this might be the last shot we have to, to really make the difference. I, I'm not willing to throw in the towel after this election. We're going to keep going. But um, you know, we need to change Albany if we're going to change the state. Do you think that there is a, a strong connection between Albany and Western New York, or do you think that they kind of, act, you know, uh, are in are isolated spheres and and aren't paying enough attention to what they're doing? Well, I think the governor is obsessed with winning the votes here. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't necessarily. Th I think we have some very good elected officials that we send to Albany, but you know, we we need. We need to blow up the system and start from scratch. I mean, we don't need an authoritarian Senate. We need term limits in state legislature. I mean, that would that would change the game. I mean, that would take power out of Shelley Silver's hands and and you know let let new voices emerge. Uh, we shouldn't have one person with that much concentrated power. It's dangerous and it's not fair to taxpayers. One of your representatives in Albany is uh, well. You recently had your your uh, endorsement meeting, right? And you endorsed all your Republicans except for uh, Senator Mark Grisanti. Uh, what what was your reservation about endorsing Senator Grisanti? There's um, th there's a lot of controversy around uh, his support of the New York Safe Act, um, and it's um, it's early still. You know, we had to call an executive committee meeting to. Um, to nominate our candidates for Congress as those petitions are now on the street and they're due in April. So it was uh, a requirement that we have that. So we got our non-controversial business out of the way. We re renominated, uh, you know, Chris Jacobs for county clerk, uh, Senator Ransenhofer and Senator Galvin. Um, we know Senator Grisanti is going to have a primary. It's a matter of how many candidates are in that primary. Uh, he had a primary last time around. Uh, we, we did back him, you know, despite there were some reservations in the organization. Um, there remain some reservations, some very vocal reservations within the organization, and we're, we're working on sorting out a solution, um, you know, for everyone. Um, so it's, it's uh, still March. I mean, our petitions don't go out until June, so we have plenty of time to, to address that office. Is there a possibility that the party will sit out that race? Uh, it's very, it's, it's on the table. Everything's on the table. And, 
we very well might just call no endorsement for that office and just let the voters decide. Because ultimately, if there's going to be a primary, that might be the most fair way to decide that. Are locally, I mean, what are the races to watch uh, in this cycle, both in the congressional race and in the primary race, I mean, uh, uh, or in the general election? I mean, are there some seats that you feel like you're going to be able to steal away to uh, your side of the aisle? Well, we're, we're uh, given a real solid look at the seat being vacated by Dennis Gabrzak. Uh I have early indications that uh, uh, Cheektowaga Councilwoman uh, Angela Wozniak, who's she's 26 years old, uh, uh, a real reformer, someone that has fought to try to change uh, you know, that town. She's given a solid consideration at running for that assembly seat. I think putting that on, on the table would... Um, and that would certainly, I think, be a first for our party to, if, if we were able to be successful there. I, I'm very excited about the potential of her candidacy. Uh, you look at um, Senator uh, Tim Kennedy's seat. There's a vicious Democratic primary going on between him and, and Betty Jean Grant, who's already announced her candidacy. I'm in recruitment stages on that. I think there's potential that uh, the Democrats will split and we might be able to come up the middle, even though that's a very, very Democratic seat. Uh, we just had a uh, a former radio talk show host, Kathy Wepner, um, who's been a conservative activist for a long time. She's announced her candidacy against Congressman Higgins. Um, you know, we're enthusiastically behind Congressman Collins and his bid for re-election, and our county clerk, Chris Jacobs, runs this year. So, you know, those are those are races that are on our table. Um, you know, all the all the races for uh, you know the, the Assembly and the Senate, as well as the Congress, well, that'll really dominate this year. And last, I want to ask you, there's been a lot of speculation that you uh, might be in the running or, or in the mix to be the next statewide county chairman. Do you have any interest in trying to pursue to, to be the state champion, uh, the, the state chairman? I, I don't make long range plans like that. I, I, I'm, I'm focused on 2014. Ed Cox is our chairman. I, I've supported Ed the last two times he's run and uh, he needs to be strong so we can go win this election this fall. What do you think would uh, be uh, an indicator? I mean, do you have to pull one of the three statewide uh, seats in order to this be a successful election? Or can you get a certain percentage of the vote and that will you know, show the, the strength of the party on a statewide level? Well, I, I think uh, really to change a culture uh, which is, you know, one, no one particular person's fault, but a culture of losing statewide elections is to win one. And I think that should be our goal, is to win statewide elections. Uh, that's what a state Republican Party is here for. I mean, the, the state party has been very helpful to me as county chairman. Ed Cox has been a partner in our efforts to take the legislature and to help, you know, win countywide elections. Um, he's also, he's done that for county parties all over the state. But in order to be more than just a series of successful regions, we need to win the big prizes. And we need to elect an attorney general or a controller or a governor. Uh, ultimately, it would be wonderful to defeat Andrew Cuomo. I think uh, it, it would do wonders for New York State. Um, we need to win statewide office to, to really be the impact players that we need to be here. Nick Langworthy, thank you so much for joining thanks us. So be, thanks for coming to Buffalo, Morgan. I appreciate it. <laughs>